CRV, an IIHS top safety pick. Honda is the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Welcome to Rogers Center. Blue Jays are home for a very short three-game series. Texas Rangers in town Friday, Saturday afternoon, Sunday afternoon, and they'll be off on the road again. Now it's time to take a look at the starting lineups. They're brought to you by Quaker State. Real, durable oil. The Texas Rangers come into Rogers Center is one of the hottest hitting ball clubs in all of baseball. Elvis Andrews, Jefferson Profar, A.J. Brzezinski. Andrews at Rogers Center has loved hitting in this ballpark. A 357 career average. He's 15 for 42 and driven in four. Then down in the order a little bit further, Jeff Baker is the third baseman. Adrian Beltre has a 11 game hit streak, 435 during that hit streak, four homers. He's homered in back to back games and he is not playing third base tonight because he's protecting some sore hamstrings and they're trying to keep him off this turf. And they'll be facing Esmil Rogers. He's making his second start as a starter here for Toronto this year. He's one and two with a 377. Esmil's been kind of the emergency role guy, but uh, could establish himself as a starting pitcher if he could start extending himself deeper into ball games. He's done a great job when he's been asked to pitch this situation. Take a look at the defense behind Rogers. It's Cabrera, Rasmus, and Jose Bautista left to right, respectively. Asturias, Meiser Asturias makes his seventh start at third base. Kawasaki and Bonifacio at the middle. Lind has committed just two errors. This is his 20th start at first base. And J.P. Aaron Sebian teams up with Esmail Rogers here tonight. Andy LaRoche has been added to the roster, but Meister Asturias will get the start at third base. Uh, last time he started, May 29th, that was the first game of the Blue Jays' last road trip. He made some great plays at shortstop in San Francisco the other day. Moving all around the field, it'll be interesting to see how Andy LaRoche is going to be utilized. He is strictly a third baseman and has played some first, but LaRoche is here along with Josh Toley. There's Toley on the left, the catcher that is off to a great start with the bat in AAA Buffalo. All smiles so far. Doesn't take too long <laughs> to get up to the big leagues when you're promoted, does it? Elvis Andrews will lead things off the leadoff batter hitting 261 so far this season. Here's the first pitch of the ball game up and in and Andrews ducks back from that inside fastball. Andrews now 24 years old. This is his fifth major league season. He has really come on the scene very quickly and taken over every day. Rips that fastball back. The only players as young as Andrews to play over 600 games in their first four seasons. A couple of Hall of Famers. Orlando Cepeda and Roberto Alomar. He was truly an everyday shortstop and sees that position early. Good fastball off the plate inside 96 miles an hour. There's nothing wrong with this guy's arm. He's got a very good arm, and I think he's getting stronger the more he pitches. Pitching out of the bullpen, an inning here, an inning there. Stretch him out just a little bit. You're going to see, I think, the true arm that Rogers has. Okay, Jack, you're a pitcher. What would your reaction be if you saw Andrews fell off that last fastball? Well, he threw two fastballs up and in that were not even close that Andrews took, but there he threw one right down the middle, and he was behind him. You know that you can probably do anything you want in those situations. You can change up. You can throw the breaking ball because you're ahead. And you might want to just run one up a little higher and see if he'll chase it. Two balls and two strikes to the leadoff hitter. Breaking ball stayed inside. Is Turris with a good backhand and a strong throw. Nice play by Miser and Turris to start his night. Told you that he made a couple of very nice plays in San Francisco with R.A. Dickey on the mound. He starts off this game nicely. Good quick hop and watch. This is a design play. Bounce it over there to third base from third base over to first base to get a very fast Andrews. You got to get it out there far enough where it bounces up high so Adam Lynn, the first baseman, can handle it. Nice play right there by Asturias. Jerkson Profar, the second baseman. 20 year old 
rookie for the Rangers. Takes a breaking ball downstairs. He came onto the scene with a splash. Hit a home run in his first major league plate appearance last September 2nd against Zach McAllister. People have been hearing about Profar for a number of years. He has been ranked the number one minor league player for the last year. Came up last year, opened up everybody's eyes, and they were talking all spring. What are we going to do with this guy? How is he going to make the club? Well, he did. An injury got him here. Ian Kinsler is on the disabled list, the regular second baseman. So even though Profar is a shortstop, he has slid over the other side of the bag. I heard some rumors in the spring that, oh, let's put him in the outfield, see if he can play a little bit of outfield and see if he can be one of those super utility guys. He's got way too much talent to be talking about that. Yeah, he needs to play every day, and he will eventually. It's just a matter of where he's going to play. Profar is from Curacao, Ron Washington. The veteran manager knows he's got something special here in profile. Couldn't have a better manager to break in with than Ron Washington. He has a knack of taking young infielders and really turning them into great fielders. Yeah, he did that with Eric Chavez in Oakland early on. Spent 11 years with the Oakland Athletics in his seventh season as the manager of the Rangers. That's ripped right back up the middle for a base hit. So far, got that high fastball and turned it around. First thing you want to see from a young hitter, can he handle the heat? You can see that's a great hands hit where he uses his hands that come through very quickly. He'll develop some power as he gets a little bit older, still very young. And Jay Pierzynski moves up to the third spot tonight. The Rangers have given a couple of their veterans the night off, Lance Berkman and Nelson Cruz, both on the bench tonight. Rodgers delivers a strike. Pierzynski's 297 average. There's Cruz next to Elvis Andrews on the bench. He's had history of hamstring problems, and they didn't arrive in Toronto until 3.30 in the morning from Boston. So not a bad deal. I tell you what, there's a lot of Blue Jays pitchers that are thrilled he's on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> the way he swings the bat against the Blue Jays, go take as much time as you need, <laughs> big guy. You saw Pierzynski is on a streak. Yep, Rogers balked. Gary Darling, the second base umpire, called him for two moves with his hands, and you heard him immediately. He came to two different stops. Well, let's watch and see what he does here. He comes up, stops, and then he moves again. So you can't do that. Two stops. Two stops. You only need one. Gary Darling's the crew chief. He's at second base tonight. So Pierzynski bats with a runner in scoring position. Drives this ball to the left. Melky Cabrera got a good read. Throw to second. Not in time. Profar got back as Cabrera unloaded that throw in a hurry. Well, A.J. hit it on the nose right there. But, but right he, at a charging Melky. So if he could have got his feet yep. set a little bit quicker, he caught it in between. Threw it off the wrong foot. Profar, look how quick he is. Reads base hit and then has the speed to get back before that throw came in. Now Profar is still in second base now for the RBI man, Adrian Beltre. Beltre's the DH tonight. And Ron Washington is told everybody that he's just going to DH him here in Rogers Center. Give him a few days off of third base with the turf. Well, he's 34 years old now, and he's had some hamstring problems the last couple of days. He returned the lineup Wednesday night in Boston. So you're going to make sure you keep him healthy. Rogers misses with that inside pitch. It's a ball and a strike. Yeah, he's flying open a little bit. 
his lower body is moving faster than his upper body and that's usually what happens when your front shoulder flies open you're up and up and in on a right hander up and away on a left hander good slider Boundary chased let's see his delivery here pretty easy pretty simple ends up in a good spot when a pitcher's flying open like that, is there something he can do? Maybe throw a breaking ball to help them well, slow that, down a little bit. That's just what AJ just or, or JP just called right there. Is a breaking ball kind of slowed his upper body or lower body down a little. Have the breaking ball pull foul. You know, as a hitter, that's what I would do. I would see a guy who was really spinning out like he was there on a couple of pitchers, and his arm wasn't catching up. He's got to make an adjustment. He's got to throw some type of off speed pitch. Well, that's just it. The good pitchers will make adjustment within a pitch. And the the not so good pitchers, a lot of the young pitchers will take three, four, maybe maybe two walks before they can make that adjustment. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Jackson Profar at second base. Right back up the middle. Rasmus is going to have a shot at Profar. The throw is up the third baseline, and the Rangers take a 1 0 lead. Beltre hit that ball so hard it got to Rasmus quickly, but he threw the ball halfway between home and third, and the Rangers are on the board. Well, another fastball out over the plate. Adrian Beltre is one of the better hitters in the league year in and year out. Great defensive player, but he doesn't miss fastballs out over the middle. And he just rips that ball right back up the middle, especially up. They wanted that ball down and away. And you can see J.P. Aaron Sebia watch their turn at third base. Meister Sturis, the third baseman, was watching Profar the whole time. And he went over and asked the third base umpire if he hit the bag. And he said barely. That's Paul Emmel over there. Watch him one more time coming around. Sturis is eyeballing him. That's your job. And you can see he just barely gets a cleat on the corner of that bag. Jeff Baker batting with two outs. Baker has been red hot. He's had two home runs and driven in four in his last three ball games. Hit 353 over his last 17 games. Well, he had a long home run last night at Fenway Park up on the parking lot across the street in left field. Not another power hitting third baseman for the <laughs> Texas Rangers. They have gone back generations having third basemen with that type of power. Started with Buddy Bell, Larry Parrish, Dean now Palmer. Dean Palmer. Now, of course, they've got Adrian Beltre. Banker's a journeyman. He's 31 years old. He played with three teams last year the Cubs, the Tigers, and finished up with the Atlanta Braves. He began his career with the Colorado Rockies. He was a fourth round pick in 2002. Part of that World Series team in Colorado in 2007. And since the fastball that Beltre hit up the middle, Esmond Rogers throwing a lot of breaking balls all of a sudden. 25 pitches here in the first inning. For Rogers. Two balls and two strikes. Another breaking ball, and he finishes off Baker. But the Rangers have taken a 1 0 lead. Blue Jays in the bottom of the first. It'll be Milky Cabrera, Jose Bautista, happy to be home, and Edwin Encarnacion.
Rocky Cabrera, top of the order, Jose Bautista, Edwin Encarnacion, Adam Lim, the cleanup batter. Bautista in his last 16 games here at Rogers Center, a 431 average, 25 for 58. He's done some damage as well. Adam Lynn, he loves the Texas Rangers. 15 home runs in just 40 career games against Texas. He has hit more home runs against one other club, and that's the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. That's it. There you see the numbers for right-hander Nick Pepish, the 24-year-olds. Three and four with a 388 ERA. He's got all four pitches, and he'll throw them all whenever he wants to. He's got a lot of confidence for a young pitcher. Nick Tepish, 24 years old. Melky Cabrera, as he's done over the last month or so, taking that first pitch. Get a look at what he's dealing with. Hits it to Profar, who make an easy play of it. One down. Texas has made some adjustments on defense. They've had to juggle the lineup. No more Josh Hamilton in the outfit. It's Murphy, Gentry, and Leonis Martin left to right. Jeff Baker gets to start probably in this whole series of third for Adrian Beltre. Andrews and Profar up the middle. Chris McGinnis makes his first big league start tonight, and A.J. Pruszynski, the veteran, behind the plate. And there's the youngster just called up. He was the 2012 Arizona Fall League MVP, making his big league debut tonight for Texas. Tepes busts one inside to Bautista. You know, one thing you're going to find from Tepish that you really like, he works very quickly. He gets the ball, and he is ready to throw more strikes. He's a pitcher, not a thrower, and likes to get it and go. Comes out of the University of Missouri. He was a 14th round pick, which is kind of surprising when you think of his ability. 2010 drafty. A big sweeping slider. Certainly has the size, about 6'5", and creates that good downward angle. Well, he doesn't have... A fastball in the high 90s. It's, it's a very good fastball. But he comes out of the gate throwing two fastballs in. That combination of him having the confidence in it and a veteran catcher and A.J. Brzezinski knowing that Baptista is a guy that likes the ball out over the plate. Establish in early, it's usually a pretty good plan. Baptista goes after that high fastball. That's the first strikeout of the night for Tippish. You know, you can see he was a pitcher. On that at bat, fastball count. He threw him a breaking ball, and this time he jams up Jose Bautista with a fastball up and in. Two quick outs for Tepish after his club's taking to a one nothing lead. Edwin Encarnacion. Boy, Powder River, huh? He's just pounding that strike zone. Well, he's starting over the middle. It's tailing in a little bit. He starts it. On the outer half, you just don't want it to tail back in. So he's got the two seamer and the four seam fastball. Little slider, curveball, and a changeup. Sinking fastball when it's working, he'll get a lot of ground ball outs. Ball is hit to center field, but not that deep. Craig Gentry over. Quick inning for Nick Tepish. Just 10 pitches. He retires the side in order.
Josh Tolley and Anthony LaRoche are up from AAA. Tolley hit 322, LaRoche 282 with seven homers. Henry Blanco was designated for assignment. So Blue Jays have 10 days to dispose of his contract. Anthony Ghost was sent to Buffalo AAA, get back to playing every day, and to recapture his stroke and get that regular playing time under his belt. So there have been a couple of moves. Josh Tolley and Andy LaRoche, newest Blue Jays on the bench tonight. Esmail Rogers misses with the first pitch. David Murphy, the left fielder. That was a good off-speed pitch. Looked like he had good sink on that pitch. Rogers contributed to the Rangers' first inning run with a walk. Pitching out of the set position with Jerickson Profar at first. He balked him to second and then and out later, they'll trade Colvin in. And it goes right back with that off speed pitch there. That's his changeup. Throws it kind of like a split finger, chokes it a little bit. Breaking ball. Driven in the air to center. Rasmus is there. One down. Now it's time for our Blackberry Sneak Peek stand of the game. Brought to you by the new Blackberry Z10 and Q10. Built to keep you moving. Well, there you see the difference in pitches that Esmo Rogers throwing. Pretty much all fastballs and sliders about a third as much. Just a few curveballs. We both agree, Tabby, that he might want to try to mix in more change-ups than he already has this game. Yeah, he just threw three straight change-ups to David Murphy, and I think that's going to have to be a big pitch for him. Reason why his fastball is very good, his slider is very good, his curveball is good, but they're all, generally speaking, about the same speed. And as a hitter, you get a guy throwing about the same speed, you have to throw something with a greater separation miles per hour. I agree with that all. All the way in. I think his changeup has to be a little bit slower than his breaking ball. His breaking ball is about five to eight miles an hour difference than his fastball, although today he's starting out the game with a good heater. I, I checked him out there that at bat against Murphy. He threw the first change up to him and he looked back and he looked at the miles per hour. <laughs> I, I, I caught him looking up there to see what it was, just to see if he could take a little something more off of it. The next one was 84. That was strike two. I hope he doesn't get shied away from his fastball because of the Beltre RBI single. Exactly. That's what you worry about with the and, and the reason more so than anything is his location on the fastball. He cannot get away from it. He's just got to locate it better. And if he does that and have a good breaking ball and a change up, he'll be fine. I think when you have a veteran catcher that understands that, that's where a catcher can help a young pitcher say, look it, let's not give up on that pitch right now. Let's go out there and, and locate it better. Absolutely. He's got a great arm and you don't want to give up your number one weapon. Another slider. Three and two. So nothing wrong with the selection. Just bad direction. Exactly. With that fastball. Well I, th I just think he's been affected by that one hit. The Beltre RBI single on a fastball. Hey, you're talking about one of the best RBI guys in the last 15 years. Another breaking ball and the strengthen. I think you always got to keep in mind that you're analyzing yourself, too, and that if you're cognizant of the fact that you threw a pitch that might have been the right pitch if you would have located it, and because you didn't locate it is the reason why you hit it. Yeah, not, not the selection of the pitch. Exactly. First major league at bat for Chris McGinnis. He was just called up from the minor leagues. Think his heart's beating a little bit? It better. <laughs> if you're coming to the big leagues for the first time. 25 years old. Those are his numbers from AAA round drop. When Mitch Moreland went on the disabled list with the hamstring problems, I love what Ron Washington said. I want a guy who can catch the ball first. I don't care what he hits. I want a guy who can catch the ball on this ball team. Well, they're a first place team. And they've been in first place 
now for five straight seasons through 59 games of the season. Berkman's a veteran that probably can't play as much first as he once did. Bouncing ball. Rodgers is a good athlete. He'll take it himself. Ismail Rodgers retires the Rangers in order. We've played an inning and a half. Texas has a one nothing lead. Brought to you by the 2013 Honda CRV, an IIHS top safety pick. Honda is the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Back here at Rogers Center, the red hot Adam Lind will start things off for the Blue Jays. Lind has raised his batting average 91 points since May 10th. He's also had eight multi hit games over his last 12 starts. Average at 329. He just lights up when he sees a Texas Ranger yeah. uniform. Bring it on. Doesn't matter what ballpark. Although he's got great numbers in Texas. How about that 0 for 13 is a thing of a way past now for Adam Lynn. Really interesting. He did not hit a home run until May. He has five homers. Good slider right there. Fouled it off. There's just something about the way the Rangers pitching staff works to him. We mentioned he has 15 home runs. He has 17 home runs against the Tampa Bay Rays. That's the most against one club. Boy, that's a good <laughs> fastball right at the knees, and it's the second strikeout for Tepish. Yeah, Tepish just coming right after everybody, challenging hitters inside the strike zone. What a concept. Can't be afraid to throw that fastball. That was 94 miles an hour, but it really surprised Lynn. I think Adam was looking for the off speed pitch there. Well, the 3 1 pitch was a slider. I think that surprised him. He was sitting on the fastball, and then he froze on the fastball when he got a 3 2. J. Pierre and Sebia is one of the guys we talked about that's happy to be home. They had a rough road trip. On the road trip, Aaron Sevia just one for 24 with nine strikeouts. Ball and a strike. Boy, that's a good breaking ball. A lot of depth and sweep on that tight breaking ball. Yeah, that's going to be tough to pick up. So they're going to have to see him the first time through. See if he falls into any patterns and watch that breaking ball. See how quickly JP, excuse me. AJ, we got too many initials in this <laughs> catcher's department tonight. JP at the plate, AJ behind the plate, but Pierzynski really gives those signs quickly. Back to back strikeouts for Tepish to start the second. 
And another good hard slider right there. Kepish starts it on the plate and then it breaks down and away. You say JP pulling his head off. Colby Rasmus the batter with two outs. Can't hit what you can't see. Rasmus goes after the first pitch. Colby had a good road trip. He went nine for 29 on the trip. Hit a long home run in San Diego. Hit at a 310 clip over the seven games. Shows bunt. That ball ate him up. 0 oh and 2. That's a sneaky fastball right there. The way he throws it. Uh, Again, he likes to work very quickly. He gets on the mound, boom, boom, boom. He wants to throw the ball, and then it's on top of you. Curveball. Pepish strikes out the side in the second. Four strikeouts already for the rookie right-hander. He's got the slider working. He's got the fastball working, and there's the knuckle curve. He strikes out Rasmus to end the inning. Canada and Little League Canada. Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, June 24th, 25th, and 26th at Carnes Field. The instructors include Roberto Alomar, Sandy Alomar Sr., Brian McRae, and Dwayne Ward. Visit BlueJays.com slash Baseball Academy for more information. The Toronto Blue Jays are proud supporters of amateur baseball across Canada. Lots of kids on hand, and a lot of kids will be in attendance for the Blue Jays Honda Super Camps. All across the country. Leonis Martin playing in right field tonight. He is a natural center fielder that can really cover a lot of ground. Martin was born in Cuba. His hometown is Via Clara, Cuba. He defected in 2010, set up residence in Mexico, and then was signed by the Rangers. Texas does a terrific job in Latin America. They've always had a heavy Latin influence, going back to Juan Gonzalez and Pudge Rodriguez, Ruben Sierra. Yeah, at times, they own Puerto Rico. All the best uh, players came from Puerto Rico with that team. You just named a couple of them. Gonzalez and Pledge both from Puerto Rico. Sierra as well. Breaking ball and Martin strikes up. Well, Esmil again going with the slider and pretty much change up that hole at bat. He threw him first pitch fastball, and after that, everything was off speed or in the in the breaking ball department. So one out back to the top of the order. Martin is the third strikeout for Rogers. Elvis Andrews was retired on a good defensive play by the third baseman Meiser Asturis. 
Mister is making his seventh start of the season at third base. There's a fastball. The challenge for starting pitchers is to show the hitters a different look each time through the order. But you can't get away from your fastball. That sets up everything else. And that's why I liked what I saw out of Tepish that first round. He came in, very first hitter, or excuse me, the second hitter, Bautista. He pitched him in with fastballs. And I think that should always be the plan for every starting pitcher is establish a fastball early inside until the hitter adjusts to it. If the hitter shows you he can handle that pitch, then you start throwing the fastball in other locations. But you can't get away from the pitch that got you to the big leagues. Yeah, yeah and, and that's the fastball, and it's still the best pitch you can throw is a well-located fastball. I don't care if it's 83 or 103. If you throw it in the right spot, it's going to be effective. Especially if you've got an arm like Esmeel Rogers. We noticed it right away in the first inning that his fastball was probably his best this season. Another slider and Andrews chases it out of the zone. Four strikeouts for Rogers. Another breaking ball. And the Rangers, this is a good hitting team, Texas Rangers. Well, Esmo's got a good slider tonight also. It's crisp. It's a lot like Tepish. They're both real tight breaking balls. And at 89, 90 miles an hour, you locate it down and away, it's tough for any hitter. It's going to be interesting to watch how they attack Profar here. Profar had a 3-2 fastball that he ripped into center. First hit of the ball game. You know, even without... Josh Hamilton, you mentioned it at the top, and Mike Napoli is no longer here. Michael Young is no longer here. This Texas Rangers team can still hit. Fourth in the American League and team batting. They might not have as much power, you would think, but they're still up there with the home runs. Second with 75 home runs. You know, when you lose Josh Hamilton, who hit over 40, and Michael Young and Napoli, they have a lot of power. What? Ron Washington has said though and, it, and it's really evident here tonight is that he's putting a premium on defense and you look at those guys and you've improved defensively with the young players they have here today over some of those names you just put on the board. There's a good change up. We're seeing the change up probably for the first time from Rogers where it's really an effective pitch. Of course he's only making a second start and now the bullpen you don't need to throw that change up. Over the course of a single inning or two. And he talked about that. He said, if I'm going to start, I've got to develop that change up just a little bit more. 2 2 pitch. Strike three call. How about these pitches going back and forth? Tepish struck out the side in the bottom of the second. Rogers said, I can do that. He comes right back and strikes out three in the top of the third.
23rd when the Blue Jays take on the Orioles. The game starts at 1.07 p.m. The first 20,000 fans in the Rogers Center will receive a Blue Jays beats town. Call the Jays directly at 416-341-1234 to order your Jays tickets. You can always log on to BlueJays.com or stop by most Rogers Plus locations and pick up your Blue Jays tickets for the Beach Town Giveaway Sunday, June 23rd. Nick Pepish gets ahead of Miceris Sturis. First pitch fastball. Tempish, I'm going to say this right now, and you guys can tell me I'm crazy, but he looks to me like a throwback. A little bit like Larry Sorensen of the Brewers and Cardinals, just throwing that moving fastball. Jeff Baker doing his Adrian Beltre impersonation down at third. Takes a hit away from his Sturis. You know, I'm with you, with him, about Tempish. Here's the ball inside out by Asturis and Baker. Flags it down off the turf and makes the, the play. He's not a th afraid to throw strikes, and I think that's what you mean about a throwback, that he gets it and goes, and here it is, boys. Let me see what you can do with it. You know, and think about this. The pitch count era that we live in, what a great strategy because you're getting quick outs. You're getting three and four pitch outs, maybe one and two pitch outs occasionally instead of going three, two on everybody and having five or six balls fouled off. Yeah, and he comes into this start on a nice little roll, does Nick Tepish. He's allowed just five earned runs in his last 23 innings at the start of this game. He's stretched out now over 25 and a third. Bonifacio breaks his bat. You mentioned something that's interesting, Jack, in this pitch count era. And you're right. If you're a pitcher, you know that you're going to be out of the game somewhere around 100 pitches. Why in the world wouldn't you throw it over? Well, that's why, for me, strikeouts are important in certain situations. It, to me, to go out there and try to be Nolan Ryan, first of all, nobody's ever going to catch Nolan. So let's get that straight right now. So that's what I tell all, tell all the young pitchers that want to fall in love with a, with a strikeout is, Learn how to get two pitch outs. That's pitching. Well, and what else that does is it doesn't give the hitter any information. If you exactly. only see two pitches every at bat, you're going to come up the next time and go, geez, I wonder what I'm going to get. And if you want to go deep into the game, you're going to have to have a plan for them, the third and fourth at bats. Pitchers that go out in the first inning and throw every pitch in their repertoire, to me, I don't get it. It's like if you can get through a whole round, nine hitters. And they only see your fastball. That's, now you have. That's a good thing. Absolutely. <laughs> I think I read somewhere over the course of the last 24 hours that the average of a major league hitter, the average hitter is hitting 250. 253, maybe to be exact. But I mean, that's not very good. And everybody pitches guys that suggest they're all 300 hitters. And that's not the case. Hitting's hard. Real hard. Do, do pitchers get out there and say, I have to make a perfect pitch to get this guy out? Flying down the right side, but that's going to hook foul. And it's also another broken bat. But do they get out there and say, I've got to be perfect to get these guys? Well, nobody's perfect, number one. And I think the, the general idea is if you can throw a fastball in the low 90s, you know, for many, many decades, that was as good a fastball as majority of pitchers ever were in the big leagues. So if you can throw in the mid low 90s and you can locate it knee high in and out, you're going to have a real good chance of being in the big leagues for a long time. And having success. Absolutely. On the ground. Andrews comes after it, bobbled it a bit, and then had to hurry his throw because Bonifacio can run. Two down. Fans, if you want your baseball questions answered by our team of experts, email asktheexperts at sportsnet.ca. And keep your eye out for the home hardware Ask the Experts segment later on in the game. Well, as you heard the roar from the crowd, that's because Munenori Kawasaki was back at Rogers Center and he's going to bat. He's become a fan favorite. Munts it out in front of the plate and say foul ball. AJ, he called him out. 
what happened? The ball hit him. The umpire at home plate, Jerry Meals, calls him out, and now John Gibbons is going to come out to argue the case. Jerry Meals has called Kawasaki out for that bunt hitting him. Let's take a look at it. Maybe he stepped across the plate. Watch where his foot is. Absolutely. He steps on the plate when he made contact, and he is out. A.J. Przinski picked up on it. Gibbons isn't going to win this argument either. Munenoi Kawasaki and you Darvish the starting pitcher for the Rangers tomorrow got a chance to catch up of course they both played a long time in the Japanese professional league Darvish played seven years before he signed with the Texas Rangers so he will start tomorrow Darvish played for the Nippon Ham Fighters and he was a two time Pacific League MVP he won the Japanese equivalent of the Cy Young Award, the Samu Moore Award in 2007. We'll see him tomorrow afternoon. He may be winning the original Cy Young Award some year. He's a good one. AJ Pierzynski lined out to left field his first time up. Hammers this ball to right. Bautista looking up. It's over his head off the wall. Bautista plays it perfectly. And Pierzynski is held to a long single. Pierzynski has hit the ball hard twice tonight against Rogers. Bautista, an alert play, keeps it to a long single. Hit the ball the other way for an out this time. Hanging, breaking ball from Rogers. And he hits it on a line. But watch Jose know that he can't catch it, but set himself. And get the ball back as quick as possible to hold Pierzynski, who had thoughts of maybe stretching that, but then said, I better stay right here. Adrian Beltre has the only RBI of the game. It's 1 0 Texas. Let's watch this at bat, see how they approach Beltre. He had a fastball his last time up, a high fastball out over the plate and ripped it on the line to center. He now has a 12 game hit streak. Looks like he may have broken his back. He's still quick inside, isn't he? Try and throw a ball inside to Beltre. He can still pull it. There was a time where you could get him in there. Really like the ball out away from him, or he could go the other way. Well, that's still a great pitch, though. You can pull it foul two strikes, and then you have one pitch to make him eat something out of the zone. So I, I still believe that's a great pitch. Throw it inside, let him pull it foul twice. Another fastball inside. 
So now here's where you got to make a good pitch. Beltran, he can hit breaking balls. And if you throw a breaking ball in the strike zone with two strikes, yeah. he'll hit it. He'll hit anything out over the plate. You hang a breaking ball, you hang a fastball. And he's a pretty good off speed hitter, too. You want to pound him in again? Loved it. Perfect. Look at that bunching inside. Well, he tied him up and gets the desired result the strikeout. Number six for Rogers. How about the little bit of movement at the end there? Watch how he turns the ball over. You see it moving and just burrowing in on Adrian Beltre. You know, that's. To me, that location and that pitch has always been, always will be the best pitch in baseball. Fastball that you can tail in on a right hander or a left hander if you're a left handed pitcher. Not many guys can handle it. Third baseman Jeff Baker struck out his first time. He lines to the second baseman and Pierzynski does a good job of base running. Boy, oftentimes, and we've seen it a lot with this ball club, the Blue Jays, a base runner at first will take an extra step, and that'll end the inning. Know who you are. A.J. Pierzynski knows exactly who he is. He doesn't get a very big lead. He's not going to get a big secondary lead, and he's seen that play, I bet, hundreds of times in his career, that line drive that has a chance to be caught. No sense going out there and getting doubled off. David Murphy goes after the first pitch and lines it down the left side. That's going to reach the seats out of play. You know, oftentimes it'll happen with slower guys like Pierzynski because you're aware, hey, I got to get a good jump and try to go first to third on a base hit. But he read it perfectly. He knows who he is. He knows the type of player he is. Probably won't go first to third unless it's a long single. So there's no sense getting out there and Getting doubled up on a line drive. David Murphy. Murphy's 31 years old. Boy, he had a good season a year ago. Hit 304 with 15 homers and 29 doubles. With the draft going on yesterday and continuing into today, David Murphy enjoyed his draft day. He was a number one pick of the Red Sox out of Baylor University in Waco, Texas, back in 2003. Two and one, two outs. Downstairs. Murphy is a 322 career hitter against the American League East. Only Ichiro has a better average among active players against the East. As a strike. Full count. I know he has worn out the Blue Jays in his career. He always comes up with big hits against Toronto. Full count. Pierzynski at first. He'll be off on the pitch. Lind is playing behind him. Murphy lays off the appeal to third base umpire. And he says no swing, so it'll be first and second to you. I'm speaking of the draft. Let's go back a few years. Well, maybe a few more than a few years. <laughs> 1976, and take a look at this draft list. Floyd Bannister was first overall, and then how about Pat Tabber, 16th overall by the Yankees? Trammell, Henderson, Jack Morris. That's a pretty impressive draft right there. Who was the scout who recommended drafting me ahead of some of those guys right there? Are they still in baseball? Hey, we both got in front of Bogsy. That's all that matters. <laughs> Boy, that was quite a draft. Ricky Henderson in there. Wade Boggs. <laughs> Floyd Bannister. He was a great collegiate player. Never really developed into that same stature. But he had a good career. Don't get me yeah. wrong. Yeah, very good very career. Good career. had some arm problems. That's yeah. what... Happened to Floyd. Gentry pulls it on the ground. His Torres will beat A.J. Przinski to third. The inning is over. Texas leaves a pair on, but they have a one nothing lead. Cabrera, Bautista, Incarnacion against Tepish when we come back.
one source for live baseball. Listen to live audio, follow games, pitch by pitch, and enjoy in-game video highlights. The app is available on the iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch, Android, and BlackBerry Z10. Season-long subscription packages are available for $19.99. Visit BlueJays.com for more details. At that 13 is the official app of Major League Baseball. Miss Mill Rogers gets a visit from the manager, and generally that means that the pitcher is done. I don't know that I've seen the handshake just yet. Maybe he's checking on how he feels, but he has thrown the ball very well. Well, his pitch counts around 70, which is still. Milky Cabrera puts a charge in a home run, Milky. Number three for Cabrera, and we are tied. Well, Nick Tepish is perfect for the first round, nine up and nine down. But the second time around, Cabrera sitting in fastball. And he gets one up out over the plate himself. And that might make S. Mill Rogers reconsider. <laughs> hey, what do you think, Gibby? Maybe I got a little left. Can't win it. it hasn't gone five yet. Yeah. Middle, middle with that fastball, and Cabrera didn't miss it. Rogers still sitting on the bench. He might still be in this game. Well, Aaron Loop is throwing in the bullpen. We don't know what's going to happen. Melky Cabrera turn on that fastball big man. As soon as it left the bat. No doubt. Bautista just got under it. Gentry in center is there and it's the first out of the bottom half of the fourth. For Cabrera it's his 22nd RBI. This is an interesting matchup between the Rangers pitchers and the Blue Jay hitters. The Rangers have averaged under a home run per nine innings pitched. That's the second lowest figure in the American League. They've done a good job of keeping the ball in the yard, which is impressive when you consider their home ballpark. Rangers ballpark in Arlington is a launching pad. Launching pad is right. Second lowest in the American League. Blue Jays third highest in the AL. Two very good hitters ballparks. Tempish hasn't slowed his tempo down at all. I was going to say, just have to see if he reacts any differently. If he still pounds his zone with the fastball. The breaking ball, it's popped up a mile high. Profar calling for it. He camps under it and makes the catch. Two down. Aaron Loop should be ready if needed. It looks like he's getting ready to come in the game. One one ball game. And then takes one outside. Way outside. Tepish lost the grip on that breaking ball. Blue Jays have now hit 74 home runs. Closing ground on the Texas Rangers. Rangers have hit 75. Orioles lead the American League. These two teams are the only clubs with three batters with 12 or more home runs. They are power laden. They've got a lot of power up and down the order. Bautista with 12, and Conesion with 17, and Aaron Sevilla with 12. And Lynn will take the two out walk. Well, when you're in a zone like Adam Lind is in right now, you're going to walk a few. He's seeing the ball so well, he's not afraid now to take a strike or two and get deeper into the count. He's looking for that one pitch kind of keyholing. I don't think that bat, so he wanted to walk. I don't think he wanted anything to do no. with Adam Lynn. 
Nothing. Those four pitchers weren't even close. That might be A.J. Puzinski's influence as well. Got the veteran catcher behind the plate. Got Aaron C.B. coming up, a right handed bat. Aaron C.B. struck out his first time up. Two down. Jays have tied it here in the fourth. Is not a base stealing threat at all. He has one steal in one attempt, and that was early on. Tepish is now allowed seven home runs. This is his 11th start of the season. Belky Cabrera has created a buzz in this ballpark in that long home run to the second deck just inside the right field foul pole. Sebia hits it hard, but Gentry moves over to his left to make the play. Blue Jays have tied it. We'll move to the fifth. It's a 1-1 game. Now it's time for a Blue Jays Central update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the Blackberry Broadcast Studio. John Gibbons give me the pitcher started Ismail Rogers why did you decide to take him out after four innings well Buck you know we we were kind of looking at it we didn't want to get him to get over much over 80 pitches today and, and uh, you know simply from you know his last from his last start and what we've been going through in the rotation we wanted to guard him his next time out he'll be he'll be free to go you know he was really cutting it loose chalking up some strikeouts here but we thought you know instead of having to bail him out in the middle of next inning Let's turn it over to Luke. Tell us what you see from Nick Tepish and what a manager can do to upset this young kid a little bit. Well, you know, he's having a good year for me. I saw the kid in double A last year pitching. You know, he's a strike, though. He's, he's, he's got us that sneaky fastball. He works really fast. And, you know, some of the things maybe we can mess up his timing a little bit, step out of the box, those kind of things. But, you know, he's, he's got a good arm, and he's pitching very well tonight. Gary, thanks for your time. Okay, guys. Thanks. That's the manager, John Gibbons. And... New pitcher for the Blue Jays will be Aaron Luke as Luke makes his 25th appearance of the season. Now you see the numbers on Aaron Luke. Done a very good job in his role as a reliever. Yeah, he is good for multiple innings as long as he stays healthy out there. He throws plenty of strikes to keep him around for a couple of innings. Chris McGinnis in his first major league game grounded out to the first baseman his first time. Huh? Aaron Luke has had a good year. He came out of nowhere last year and really made an impression. He's carried that right into his first full big league season. McGinnis has to be thinking, man, I didn't see left handers like this down in minor leagues. Dropping down, three quarters, crossfire. I don't think he's seen a breaking ball yet. That might be coming right here. Well, that's just it. With the arm angle that Aaron Luke 
throws from. It's almost coming out of second base. There's a little breaking ball right there. But a lot of hitters that haven't seen Aaron. A little tough to pick a guy up like that. You're going to need to see him a couple times to get a game plan. What makes him so tough for me is his ability to command the fastball in on lefties or in on righties, both both sides of the plate. Again, as loops it down the left side and it sneaks into the seats out of play. And Long for, run for Milton. And from that angle, from where he's throwing, to be able to cross fire that ball in on the right handers. Yeah. It's bearing down on the right hander. It's yeah. coming right in on you. And for the lefties, it's already in on you. It's like it's coming from behind you. Think about the angle of the baseball that's coming toward you as a hitter. Yeah. Try to square that bad boy up. Keep it fair. Milk made just two appearances on this past road trip. It's a total of two and a third innings. He allowed two hits. Then walk batter had a strikeout. Big sweeper is way outside. Get an angle from behind home plate. You can see it, it's going to be let go right around there. So it's not over the top. It's not really coming off any part of the pitching rubber. Again, it strikes out. That's the first out of the top of the fifth. And boy, oh boy, Luke put that ball in a good spot. Seventh of the night by the Blue Jay pitchers. As Luke throws that one right by Chris McGinnis. Keep the ball down in a way, make the lefty stay on it. He doesn't. Picks up the strikeout. Deonis Martin struck out his first time up back in the third against Ismael Rogers. Shows bunt, takes the breaking ball. Martin had three different stints with the Rangers last season. He's just 25 years old. He played for Cuba in the World University Games in 2010. Also played for Cuba in the 2009 World Baseball Classic. It's just on the ground. Loops got to get out of the way. Mister has made another fine play. Two good plays from the third baseman so far. Two outs here in the top half of the fifth. That's Neil Rogers was the starter and he had a good outing. He sure did. Four innings, just three hits given up. Six punch outs, only one walk. So through a total of 73 pitches, very good effort. And like John Gibbons just said, maybe next time out he'll be freed up to pitch into that 100 pitch count era. And that might get him through six, seven innings. Yeah. What we saw tonight was impressive. He threw a good fastball, a curveball, and a slider, and a changeup. All of the pitches you need to be a successful start. Mixed them up well too. You used all of them at very various times. Those six strikeouts in four innings. It's a season high for Espinel and a one-off the career high as a starter. He struck out seven earlier in his career. I like him as a starter. Yeah. I don't know about you guys, what you've been I, able to I see. think he's got that potential. Mainly because he's got all the pitches for a starter, and he's he's got a good attitude, I think. You to, know what he has as a starter? He's got swagger. Yeah, he does. He goes to the mound with swagger. He's athletic. Although he committed a balk tonight, he's a good fielder. The athletes can commit balks. Yeah, they can. <laughs> Did you ever make one? Oh, boy. <laughs> I remember one time we we're in Kansas City and Mr. Phelps was the first base umpire and he called three balks on me. That was the year of the ball. Yeah, if you remember. Called everything. And yeah. I didn't they wanted you to come to a complete stop and it was questionable whether I did or not. He called three in a row on me. And I went over and I handed him my glove. And I said, You want to try this? <laughs> and he just about threw me out of the game. Thank God he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Those umpires are so sensitive. They, they, they took a little <laughs> bit more back then. <laughs> two and two, two outs. Cut on and miss. Dendra strikes out. Two strikeouts in the inning for Aaron Loop. Blue Jays are racking up the strikeouts tonight. Andrew strikes out for a second time. He's 0 for 3 so far.
presented by Ontario, yours to discover. Sunday, June 21st, 2nd and 3rd, Blue Jays take on the Orioles. Bring the cottage to the city of Toronto for the weekend. Enjoy the pregame festival outside Gate 10. There's live music, a licensed area, sun, sand, and lots of Muskoka chairs. Call the Blue Jays for tickets at 416-341-1234. Log on to BlueJays.com. Stop by most Rogers Plus locations. We move to the bottom of the fifth. It's a 1-1 game. Blue Jays have one hit. Milky Cabrera's solo home run. If you're only going to get one, you might as well make it count. <laughs> we finally got to see Nick Kep Tepish in the stretch position after he walked Adam Lynn. Hadn't been in stretch all game. Nick Tepish grew up just about five miles east of Royal Stadium. He went to Blue Springs High School. And then he went to University of Missouri. Little pop up down the right side, and McGinnis won't get to it. Interesting things about Blue Springs High School. Dusty Wathen went to high school there, John Wathen's son, and later on became a minor league manager. He's in the Philly system now. Brian McRae also played football at Blue Springs High School. He didn't play baseball in high school, but then, of course, he became a big leaguer. Played right here in Toronto. Strike three call. Rasmus is down on strikes. Save during the Beauty Tone Paint Expert Sale. Only at home hardware and building center locations. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. Nick Tepish picking up the tempo once again. Boy, that... Whole run didn't do a thing to slow him down. He's eating up some lumber too. Bouncing ball, big hop for profile. Two down. Yeah, I looked at some of the scouting reports on this young pitcher. It says he's very confident, and you can tell that his demeanor out on the mound. They gave up the long home run to Melky, but that doesn't seem to bother him. Happens. He's just gone right back out there and done his thing. Just pounded in there. You never really mind giving up home runs. It's the one that you give up with men on base. Lead off single solo home runs. You just kind of regroup. Bonifacio fouls off the first pitch. It's Duris with the ground out to second. Tepish has five strikeouts. Just outside the bag at third. Really? When you have a pitcher like this, it seems as though the hitters are always rushed. Like, wait a minute, I'm not ready for that. Well, there hasn't been a lot of guys on base, and that means he's getting outs. Everybody comes up, giving up one hit, a home run. Everybody else is out. He walked uh, Adam Lynn. That's what. Why we ask Gibby that? What you know? Yeah. What can you do with this guy because he's rushing you? He keeps the defense on their toes, so they're going to play a little sharper. And hitters are always stepping out and trying to figure out. Okay, we need to get something going here. What can we do? Melk is the only one that's touched Tepish. Makes a little off that breaking ball, but missed upstairs. I'll tell you what. I'm going to give that catcher some credit. He's got a couple of rookies in the rotation. A.J. Puszynski has this pitching staff thrown very well. Well, A.J. is known for a lot of things, but the three of us in this booth know what a catcher he is. A couple of strikeouts for Tepish. We will go to the six. Here comes the home hardware cleanup crew brought to you by Natura. Home hardware's exclusive line of safe, environmentally friendly cleaning products.
Top of the sixth inning in a 1-1 ball game, and the pitchers have ruled the night. Melky Cabrera hit his third home run of the season in the bottom of the fourth to tie it at one off. Adrian Beltre for the Rangers drove in the only run. Nick Tepish, the rookie, is dealing. Jackson Profar switch hitter batting right handed for the first time. Profar is from Curacao, and he's been on a big stage his whole life. He played in back to back Little League World Series representing Curacao. And that team was pretty interesting. They had Andrew from Simmons on the team. And Curacao has produced an awful lot of big league players. Luke strikes out. So far, his third strikeout for Luke since entering the game. Yeah, I think he's going to be a, a big player in the American League. Pro far. Reminds me a little bit of Tony Fernandez, the way he stands at the plate. He's got some power. Good glove, good arm, everything. They just have to find a position for him now. AJ Piersinski, his first at bat against Luke. Luke gets ahead. Good crowd on hand tonight. First of three against the Rangers. 36,010. Blue Jays fans have supported the ball club very well. Pierzynski gets handcuffed. You know, if you're a left-handed hitter, that's what you have to deal with with Aaron Luke. That is right on the side from down under. And as a hitter, you have no idea which way that thing's going to break. He can run it in on your hands or he can sweep that ball away. I love these kind of lefties. <laughs> you can see Piersinski's really battling him right now. He's not picking it up at all. No, that it's getting see. it's getting deep before <laughs> that's that's called an emergency <laughs> hack right there. What's <laughs> this swing? Oh, just stay alive. That's all I want to do. <laughs> Tell you what, AJ, he's a battler. He'll fight this guy. This is the first time he's ever faced Luke. Pierzinski. Now 36 years old. Big sweeper outside. Spent his last eight seasons with the White Sox. And he has had quite a run. He hit 300 in 2009 for Chicago. It's funny. He was part of a trade for a guy that is now his closer, his teammate. Pierzynski missed that breaking ball. He thought he should have hit because he was on the inner part of the plate loop with another strikeout. Three in a row, four since coming into the game. He was traded from Minnesota to the Giants for Joe Nathan, Francisco Lariano. And now Nathan is the closer, and Brzezinski's a catcher for Texas. Great job by Aaron Loop. Yeah, I would say so. He faced five batters, struck out four of them. That's a great job. So the bullpen has been on a roll. Now the newcomer, Neil Wagner, comes in, and he has been throwing nothing but strikes. Luke's done. Good night for him.
June 9th when the Blue Jays finish up this three-game series against the Texas Rangers. The game starts at 1.07 p.m. The first 20,000 fans into Rogers Center will receive a Jose Reyes figurine. Call the Blue Jays at 416-341-1234. Log on to BlueJays.com where you can stop by most Rogers Plus locations. Two outs. Neil Wagner to face Adrian Beltre. And this should be a lot of fun right here. You've got a power pitcher and Wagner. There are his numbers. He's been in four games with the Blue Jays. Hasn't been scored upon in five and two thirds innings. A very good whip under one. A good fastball hitter. Good fastball pitcher. Breaking ball off the end of the bat. Beltre has faced Wagner before. Wagner spent some time with Oakland. Also in the American League West. Big numbers for Beltre, 313, 13 homers and 37 driven in. Not biting on the high cheese right there. Wagner has been outstanding all year. Had some great numbers down in Buffalo and ever since being called from AAA, he has done an impressive job. There's the high cheese that time. They'll trade chased. Yeah, he's not going to get cheated. He, he will challenge you. And look for that heater. Blue Jays have some reinforcements for that bullpen, and they've brought up some good arms. Wagner and Perez and Lincoln. Powder River. Another fastball, and the Blue Jays strike out the side in the sixth. Second time they've had three strikeouts in an inning tonight. Wagner finishes off Beltre with a good heater. June 8th tomorrow, the Blue Jays and Rangers will play the middle game of this three-game series. There are special kids' prize tickets in the 200 and 500 level outfield seats. After the game, kids 14 and under can run the bases just like the pros. Call the Blue Jays at 416 will Order your tickets. Log on to BlueJays.com and pick up your Junior J Saturday ticket or stop by most Rogers bus locations. Munanori Kawasaki was called out for stepping on home plate while he was bunning in the third. Big breaking ball and that hit him. Kawasaki will take first to start the inning. Just the third Blue Jay to reach base. Well any way to get it started. Mooney can run a little bit. Melky the one big Mistake that Tepish has thrown. Very good command. You see that breaking ball. It's the third time that Tepish has hit a batter this season. It's a good start for the Jays here in the sixth. Top of the order, Melky Cabrera homered his last time up. 1 1 ball game. Base hit to right. Two hops to 
Martin, he gets it back in. Kawasaki stops at second. Blue Jays got something going in the sixth. Save during the Beauty Tone Paint Expert Sale. Only at home hardware and building center locations. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. First and second, nobody out. Kawasaki was hit by a pitch. Then Cabrera picks up his second hit of the night. He's homered and singled. Bautista at the plate. He has struck out and flied out. Just missed one back in the fourth. And he just missed a home run last time. He flied out to center field but just missed a hanging breaking ball. No place to put him. Off the plate outside. Third time through the order. Bautista has got a little bit better idea of what he's dealing with in Nick Tepish. I asked him today why his splits are so favorable here at home. He says, you know, you just feel a little bit more comfortable here at home. You can get into your normal routine. Plus, you have a little bit more time to work on your extra stuff. You can go down in the cage and you can hit down on the field. And he has been lighting it up here at Rogers Center this year. Counts in his favor 2 and 0. 3 and 0. Your green light in here. And you know <laughs> it. You betcha. <laughs> I think everybody. Next, next three hitters, you green light. Tepish knows it. I think A.J. Brzezinski knows it. Does he challenge him? Off the plate, the bases are loaded. So Tepish has created a problem for himself. He hit Kawasaki to start the inning. And now he walks Bautista to load the bases. Mike Maddox, the pitching coach, with a slow, deliberate walk to the mound. There is nobody warming up in the pen for the Texas Rangers. So this is Tepish's mess to get out of. Pitching coach puts his hand on the pitcher's shoulder. Do you like that? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I didn't like him on my mound. I didn't like a catcher on my mound. I didn't like a third baseman or short. So it's my mound. So if we went into the pocket, you know, it was Alan Trammell or somebody like that. I maybe right. I'd probably listen. Come on out here, Tram. But you got to remember, every time a manager or pitching coach comes to the mound, it's not because they have something good to tell you. Well. As a hitter, you're thinking first pitch, fastball right here. You just walked Bautista, no place to put Encarnacion. First pitch, fastball drilled to the gap. Kawasaki's in to score. Melky Cabrera right behind him, and they'll stop Bautista at third. Big hit for Encarnacion. He's been delivering them all year long. 50 RBIs for double E. Well, that's clutch hitting right there. Understanding situations. And right there, he gets the fastball he's looking for. Ball's breaking away a little bit and just drills it up the alley. Luckily, he didn't go all the way to the wall because Jose might have scored. Yeah, good job by Gentry to cut that ball off. Uh, double E's just become such a smart hitter and a great run producer. He knows after he walks, Bautista, pitcher. Pitching coach goes out there. He's looking for a first ball fastball. Infield is in. Adam Lynn. He swings and drives it to right. Martin back. He'll make the catch. Bautista tags at third. And Conacion tags at second. Lynn delivers a sack fly. It's 4 1 Jays. Lynn not wasting any time drives it deep to right. Good pitch to hit, hanging breaking ball. Watch where he's right on that one and just barely 
gets underneath it, or that's two runs right there. Adam knows it, but he'll take that sack fly. He got the runner in, and he got the runner over from second to third, so a good RBI chance here for J.P. Still just one out. Aaron Sevia drives it deep to center. This should score in Connection. Edwin tagging at third, and Aaron Sevia picks up the fifth run of the ball game. 30th RBI for J.P. You're just thinking about get the ball to the outfield and get it deep enough. It's an easy RBI. The infield is in. Even if he hit a line drives, you're going to get yourself on. Watch this. Go down and get this ball. He struck out on that same pitch earlier in the game. That breaking ball down and away. Expands the strike zone a little bit. Just loft it into the outfield for an easy RBI. The Blue Jays with five runs. They lead it 5-1. Rasmus grounds out to end the inning, but the Blue Jays take advantage of Nick Tepish. Kawasaki hit by a pitch, starts the four-run inning. Auction winners, welcome to Rogers Center. Great vantage point up there in the TD Comfort Zone, and while over in the Jays Care Community Clubhouse are some very special guests from Easter Seals, Ontario. Welcome to Rogers Center. We hope you have a great time tonight. And right now, you got to be thrilled. The Blue Jays have a 5-1 lead. Neil Wagner was a first pitch strike. Wagner closed out the sixth inning. He struck out Adrian Beltre with a good fastball. The Blue Jays bullpen has really been throwing the ball well. With two shutout innings so far in this game tonight. They have now extended their streak to 14 and two thirds without allowing a run. They've allowed just one earned run over the last 26 and a third innings. You know, they've been remarkable. They've had a lot of work. Little looping liner into right. Bautista will play it on the hop. Baker has his first hit of the night. Looks like Wagner took something off the breaking ball and Baker stayed on it. Well, he has three good pitches. Fastball slider and he can split it. That ball, that looked like the breaking ball. He got his hand on the side. And Baker dumps it in the right field for a hit. Comes right back with a strike. You know, you were talking about the bullpen, and they brought Perez up, and they brought Wagner up when we were down in Atlanta. Gave the Blue Jays a little bit more depth down there. And they've got good balance. They have different types of pitchers. We saw Loop with the side armor. He's been great. Wagner's got the big fastball. Delavar's hard fastball, hard splitter. 
Where do you see this guy Perez throw the baseball? He is funky. Well, I talked to Alex Anthopoulos before that game that they got called up, and he said they both earned their position here, and they have. And today they bring up Josh Tolley, and he's earned that position. He's hitting extremely well down in Rochester, or excuse me, Buffalo. Bouncing ball foul. Variety. Yeah. I think that's what you want. I think that's what you have to give your manager a variety of looks for your bullpen. Well, Gibbons now has the option with Rodgers having another good outing, and you heard from the manager himself next time for Rodgers, he won't have any restrictions on his pitch count. On the ground, it should be two. Bonifacio, Kawasaki, Lynn. Double play. And that's something that the Jays have improved on drastically from the first month is Bonifacio and Kawasaki have really gotten comfortable with each other. And they are starting to just know where each other is. And they're getting to the bag early enough to make those kind of double plays. Good strong throw right there. 50 second double play turned by the Blue Jays this year. Comes out a big time. Gentry goes after that first pitch and lines it into the seats. You have to remember that Kawasaki was not with the Blue Jays in spring training. He came over a couple of games as an extra player, but he wasn't with the Blue Jays fully full time in spring training. So he too is kind of catching up with his double play partners. On the ground, Kawasaki gets a good hop, takes his time. Easy inning for Wagner. We'll go to the bottom of the seven Blue Jays with a 5 1 lead. Park and they go watch the Jays play. Probably get a chance to get a foul ball. That would be awesome. Well, he does. Watch it. He leans over, picks up the ball from the bench, and says, I got it. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? That was an out over in San Francisco at second base with Scudero. <laughs> oh, man. He's thinking, I had a ball right in my hand, and then I was digging myself. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me, everybody. Hang with them. How about the guy, though, giving it to the kid? That's awesome. Ah. Give it to the youngster. Nick Tepish working in the bottom of the seventh. In the sixth inning, the Blue Jays scored four runs on two hits. This is foul out of play. It was the third time through the batting order. And the Blue Jays were aware that Tepes was throwing a lot of first pitches. He faced seven batters and threw 11 pitches. 
Well, he hit Kawasaki. Melky gets on with a hit. First pitch. And then he walks Batista. All three of them score. Yeah. And so Carnacion swung at the first pitch. Yep. Lynn swung at the first pitch. Aaron Sebia. And Rasmus to end the inning. 11 pitches in the inning. Blue Jays scored four runs. Hit on the ground. Pro far at second. Asturias is retired. Save during the Beauty Tone Paint Expert Sale only at Home Hardware and Building Center locations. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. Once again, the Blue Jays bullpen very effective. Neil Wagner has backed up the good effort by Aaron Luke, who backed up the starter, Ismail Rogers, another ground ball. Andrews at short. Bonifacio is retired. The Blue Jays may have a quick strike offense for sure, and Edwin Encarnacion with two more RBIs on the first pitch. He now has 50. Started the inning, and then Lind and Aaron Sebia delivered sack flies to give the Jays a five run night. They Jays. have now scored five runs in seven straight games here at Rogerson. Jays only have three hits. There it is right there making the most of a walk. Well, it's a different attack tonight than we have become used to. Kawasaki got it started when he was hit by a pitch. Now he gets a little looping single into right. Munenori Kawasaki with a two out single. Now he's a battler. We've said it so many times about his quality at bats and how he Will battle and really grind out on that bat. But this time just fighting off a little spin and breaking ball. Well, that'll turn the lineup over to Melky Cabrera, who has gone two for three tonight. Cabrera homered in the fourth to tie it at 1 1. Good time to run. Let's get a tack on run right here. Two outs. Kawasaki seven for eight this year in stolen bases. Fans don't like Tepish making Kawasaki dive back in the first. <laughs> well, those signals are coming from the dugout. JP or AJ Brzezinski is calling it. Does the little flick with his thumb? That's the throw over. Yeah, he'll look into the bench right there and get the sign. Do they want to throw over, step off, pitch out? Ow! <laughs> Cabrera fouled off that slider. Well, he's coming in hard on his hands right there. And it's so hard to tell yourself to lay off of that pitch, but you see it. Well, you tell yourself you're going to yank this ball down the line. Watch where he gets it and gets hit. Right in the knee. On the outside of the back knee. That's really unusual, but that's what happens when you get that breaking ball. Well, it's bearing in so hard on him, and if you don't get it out in front of the plate and it gets by you, that's where it's going to end. I've actually seen guys get hit swinging. With good hard breaking balls that are coming in on you. Happened to Melky against Roy Halliday in spring training. He swung and missed the breaking ball and they hit him in the back leg. Yeah. Boy, A.J. Pruszynski didn't waste any time to come right back with the yeah. same pitch. He knows. <laughs> he knows what that feels like as a as a hitter. Yeah, you swing at that pitch and you say, please don't hit it again. <laughs> <laughs> nobody nobody enjoys antagonizing the hitter more than AJ. Looks like a pitch out. Pitch out was on and Kawasaki wasn't running so now I'd run right now. 2-2. Two -two. You don't expect him to pitch out again. Got your lead half man up. If he gets thrown out he'll start the next inning. AJ thinks he's going. He's giving him a number one. 
Kawasaki with the old fake break at first. Now he'll be running. It's a full count, and two outs. Kuzinski reminding his infielders that the ground ball play is to first. McGinnis behind Kawasaki at first. There goes the runner. Another hit for Cabrera. Kawasaki around second. Got a full head of steam. He's being waved home. The throw goes to second, and Andrews drops the ball. Now Cabrera is going to be tagged out at first, but good running by Kawasaki. He never assumed a thing, and he scores all the way from first base on the single by Cabrera. The Blue Jays take a 6-1 lead into the eighth. A good bunch of base running, but a good job by the third base coach as well. Yeah, watch the Louis Rivera. Watch the head. Look where he's looking. He's looking at Martin, the right fielder, who backed up on that ball, and that was his key to send Kawasaki. Kawasaki didn't assume anything. He didn't assume that he's just going to go first to third. Good job by Louis Rivera. Very aggressive play and a very heads up play. Third relief pitcher of the night will be Brett Cecil, who comes into the ball game in relief of Neil Wagner, who went an inning in the third. There are the numbers for Brett Cecil as Rajay Davis takes over for Melky Cabrera in left field. Cecil's been outstanding. He has just chewed up left handers this year. They're hitting just 127 against Brett. Given up just seven hits and 55 at bats against the lefties. Chris McGinnis, the rookie, 0 for 2 in his first big league game. Well, John Gibbons and Pete Walker, they've got such a great commodity in the bullpen that's pitched so well. They they can mix and match guys. They've got guys that can throw two innings. A bouncing ball to Lynn. He snares it and steps out of the bag. One down. But it's a different Brett Cecil than it was in spring training. He has just turned his confidence level completely around and he believes that he can get everybody out now and he's doing a pretty good job of trying to get to that. The Jays have a good complement of lefties and righties. We've seen Loop and now Cecil still have Juan Perez in reserve. Darren Oliver threw today down in Dunedin. On a rehab. He is set to come back. John Gibbons was telling us before the game either Sunday or Monday. Come off the disabled list. There's another left hander. Colby Rasmus right there in his trucks. Martin is retired. Two outs. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. 
and accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. Blue Jays home for a short three-game homestand. This is the first of three against the Texas Rangers. Then they will be off to Chicago and Texas for a seven-game road swing. Leadoff man Elvis Andrews has gone 0 for 3 with a pair of strikeouts. Fly ball to center. Rasmus on his horse. Right on the warning track. Another good inning by the Blue Jays bullpen. Look, we'll go to the bottom of the eighth. It's a 6-1 Blue Jays lead. Now time for a Blue Jays Central update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the Blackberry Broadcast Studio. you buy Bacardi Oakart smooth spiced rum. Bacardi is a proud partner of the Toronto Blue Jays. We have to give the smooth move to our colleague Greg Zahn. We all saw this earlier. All right, the guy lost it like, what is up? I thought I had myself a baseball. Well, he does. There's Zahni. He goes and gives him a signed autograph. And that's why he's out of breath making his way back to the studio. Smooth move, Zahni. He brought him the autographed baseball and made the fan a happy fan. And he had a long run. And he's a little bit <laughs> talent off, worn out. <laughs> Does he even know he got the smooth move tonight? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was a smooth move. New pitcher for the Rangers is Russ Wolf, right hander in relief of Nick Tepish. Not much of a hard thrower fastball tops out about 91 sliders got an outstanding change up that's his primary pitch Jose Bautista had a big walk in the sixth inning rally he walked to load the bases for Edwin and Carnation who hit the next pitch for a two run double Edwin with the two RBIs now has reached the 50 RBI plateau. Ross Wolf is 30 years old. He's got big league time with the Florida Marlins back in 2007. Spent some time with Oakland in 2010. Bautista pops it into center. Gentry is there. That's the first out of the eighth inning. So that'll bring in Carnacion to the plate. Edwin has gone one for three tonight. He's up among the leaders in 
the important RBI category. He has moved ahead of Prince Fielder into third in the American League. Home runs. He's tied with Miguel Cabrera for second. He has also driven in big runs for the Blue Jays. Go ahead runs. Four. Hits this ball to third. Jeff Baker handles it easily. Two down. Now it's time for the drive of the game. Brought to you by the 2013 Honda CRV and IIHS top safety pick. Honda Sixth is the inning. Official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Sixth inning. Bases loaded. Right after a walk to Jose Bautista. First pitch swinging. He rips the ball up the gap for a couple of more RBIs. He came into this game only Miguel Cabrera had more go-ahead RBIs than Edwin Encarnacion this year, and he does it again tonight. Edwin has really picked up the pace of late. Right on pace to do what he did a year ago. Drove in 115 last year. Adam Lynn picked up a sack fly in the six, part of that four-run Blue Jays rally. Off the end of the bat. Lind also walked tonight, which has really been part of his big turnaround. A year ago, Lind had 29 walks all season long. Tonight, he picked up his 22nd walk. Seeing the ball much better, much more selective, and much more patient at the plate. I think he's understanding what they're trying to do to him. Trying to pitch around him. They're trying to get him to bite for pitches like that. He's not having any of that. Through the right side into right. Lynn has a base hit. He's one for two tonight. That average is going to jump even higher. Came into the game at 329. The Blue Jay fans have had a lot to cheer about in this game. I was a little concerned that the wave that they've Got rolling around Rogers Center here tonight might turn into a tropical storm because it wasn't stopping until that base hit for Adam Lynn. JP Aaron Seavey had a sack fly his last time up. JP's now driven in 30 for the season. strike we mentioned the Blue Jays and the Rangers are the only two teams to have three batters with 12 or more home runs Aaron Seavey one of three Blue Jays Beltre Cruz and Moreland who's currently on the DL all have 12 or more this is hit into center field Gentry makes the catch the inning is over we'll go to the ninth Blue Jays have a five run lead
they got off to an interesting start. Nick Pep is the starter for the Rangers. Looked like he was going to mow down the Blue Jays all night. But it's an unusual Blue Jays attack tonight. Six runs on six hits, and they made the most of that sixth inning. And, and I think the top of the lineup has been great. Melky's had three hits tonight. Uh, Jose has a walk. He's, they've scored four of the six runs tonight, and Edwin does it again. Another go-ahead RBI late in the ball game. A big double with the bases loaded. Jack, the bullpen has been terrific of late once yep. again tonight. They shut down the Rangers totally. Three outs away from a really good ball game right now, and Steve Delabar will get it here in the ninth. So Delabar in to finish it off. Obviously, it's not a save situation, but Delabar has had a good start to his season. 2-10 ERA for the big righty. Jackson Profar moves back over to the left-handed batter's box. Esmail Rogers set the tone tonight. Four innings, three hits, walked the batter and struck out six. He will not be the pitcher of record for the Jays. As another strength from Delamar. This will be a hard one for the scorekeeper. Who do you give the win to? Yeah. And it is the scorekeeper's judgment and Aaron Loop. Aaron Loop, four strikeouts and five batters that he faced. Loopy went one and two thirds. Wagner went one and a third. Cecil went one inning. Delabar is going to be asked to get an inning in here. Another strikeout recorded by the Blue Jays bullpen. Boy, the bullpen has been terrific. We mentioned that great stretch. 12 strikeouts on the night by Blue Jay pitching. The season high for the Rangers striking out 15. They struck out 15 times earlier this year. AJ Pierzynski takes a strike. Interesting note, too, is that other than Brett Cecil, None of these pitchers in tonight's game had to pitch out in San Francisco because of the depth that the starters got with Johnson and Dickey throwing out there. Delabar has finally realized how good his fastball is. <laughs> well, if he does, it's going to be a lot of fun watching him because he's got all the things. He's got a live farm, high 90s fastball, and movement. He just needs to split the middle of the plate and let it run. Splitter finishes off A.J. Pierzynski on three pitches. You know that point that you were making about the rest they were able to get. Think about the two off days also they had on Monday and Thursday. Yep. They've been off. There's the split right there from Delabar, and that's nasty. So four days off, and they're carrying eight relievers, so they should be well rested. Adrian Beltre, one for three with a pair of strikeouts. He's driven in the only Rangers run. 6 1 Blue Jays. Texas won the season series a year ago, 6 to 3. They split the six games here at Rogers Center. That's the first time Texas had won a season series since 2006. That's an easy 96 mile an hour fastball right there. Looks like it's effortless. Giddy up. <laughs> and in. Giddy up and in. And they're up on their feet here at Rogers Center. Great crowd tonight. Seen a great ball game. Beltray drives it toward the gap. Bautista, a long run. He'll get there, and the Blue Jays will win it. 6 1. The bullpen has extended their scoreless streak to 17 and two thirds. Rogers set the tone, and the Blue Jays took advantage of Nick Tepish in a four run sixth inning. You know what they did against him? They got a hit by a batter, turned over the lineup, and a single by Cabrera and a walk to Bautista set it all up. And then the guys who have been doing it, driving in the big runs, come through once again. Encarnacion with a double, Lind and Aaron Sebi with sacrifice fly. Plenty enough runs the way they pitched tonight. Well, the bullpen was outstanding again. It started with Esmil Rogers. And he's trying to show everybody that he may be the next starting pitcher to stick around here. But the bullpen again tonight doing a great job. They were well rested and they just flat out pitched their hearts out. 
Blue Jays win the opener 6-1 on six hits. Two hours and eight minutes. Good win. Good way to start the season. Stay tuned. Connected. Coming up now.